As much as I love classic 3D platformers, my favorite recent games are the ones that innovate and expand on what the genre can be. Unbox, Snake Pass, and now Tinykin are the perfect examples of that. Developed by Splash Team and published by Tiny Build in 2022, Tinykin is an inventive 3D platformer that combines elements of the genre we all know and love with the miniature puzzle solving and creature commanding of Pikmin. It's an odd mix for sure, but one that works so well it'll make you wonder why nobody's tried this before. Milo is a young archaeologist and researcher on the planet Aegis, a technologically advanced society that believes humanity began there. But Milo discovered proof that humans actually originated from a place called Earth. Picking up on a signal coming from the planet, he builds a teleporter that takes him straight to it, and in proper Pikmin fashion, the teleporter breaks upon arrival and he is stranded. He also can't help but notice that there are no humans in sight, and he's shrunken down to the size of a bug. In fact, the bugs have created their own society in what appears to be some guy's house. It's not just some guy though, but a man named Ardwin, whom all the bugs worship as a god. With the help of Read Me, you have to travel all over the house collecting parts of a ship, originally designed by Ardwin, to get back home. Each ship part is held by a different society, each with a veritable cornucopia of problems that need solving before any of them are willing to part with their treasures. Aiding Milo are the titular Tinykin, and this is where the game sets itself apart from other 3D platformers. Clustered throughout the house, they are obsessed with Milo, and when picked up, will happily do his bidding. Which is good, because they are essential for not only collecting all the ship pieces, but for fully exploring each level. There are five different Tinykin, distinguished by color. The purple ones can lift heavy objects, either carrying them from point A to point B, or raising gates so you can enter new areas. The red ones explode, clearing obstacles in your path or lighting fires. The blue ones can transfer electricity between themselves, allowing you to repair electrical cords to power up appliances. The yellow ones create bridges, not super useful for Milo, but are needed by the purple ones to move objects around. My favorite ones are the green ones, which you use to build a ladder wherever you need one. Being able to construct a mini Eiffel Tower and fling yourself off whenever you want is super gratifying, as it gives you another way to reach high areas, or you can glide off the top of them with your bubble, another trick in your tool belt. Using the tiny kin couldn't be easier, you just aim and the game automatically selects which ones you need based on the situation. While that may sound like a red flag, I thought the same thing, the game never gave me the wrong tiny kin, and I never had to do a song and dance to force it to give me the one I needed. It makes using the tiny kin super easy, and the game never interrupts your flow to force you to micromanage things. In fact, with the green ladder ones, you don't even need to aim, you can just hold down the trigger button and they automatically build in place. All the better, because much of the joy of tiny kin comes from the many unique and engaging scenarios that Splash Team were able to squeeze out of these little guys. You ever play a game that has a really cool idea but does almost nothing with it? That could not be farther from the case with Tinykin. The levels are designed in such a way that you can go almost anywhere at any time, but there's a light metroidvania element in that sometimes you need a certain number of Tinykin to get to a specific area. You might need a certain number of purple ones to pick up an object, but it's behind a wall that you need to blow up with some red ones, but the red ones are stuck behind a door that needs to be opened with electricity, so you need some blue ones first. It makes exploration rewarding because you're always finding more tiny kin that you'll need later. Make no mistake, despite the tiny kin and the puzzle aspects, this is a collectathon 3D platformer at its heart, and it feels great to control. Traversal is a blast because Splash Team have perfected the feel of jumps and rolls. You've got the bubble to float around, but you also have a bar of soap that you can ride around on to grind on ledges, and these spider webs that shoot across the room that serve as a form of fast travel. I was getting Big Jack 2 vibes from this part. The game just feels so great to control. It makes you want to find all the collectibles, and there are a few. From mail that needs to be taken to the post office, to the pollen to upgrade your glide ability, to artifacts that fill in the lore, to whatever objects you need to complete the bug's requests. The real genius of this game though is the fact that the tiny kin themselves are really the main collectible. You need them to reach most of the other collectibles and complete your objectives, and it's impossible to progress without them. But they're not just given to you, you need to explore each level to get them, and the right quantity of them at that. So many 3D platformers make you feel like you're collecting stuff just for the sake of it, they don't really have much impact in-game. But that's not the case with Tinykin, because they've made the main collectible an essential means of progress. That's genius design, and I wish more collectathons would take notice of this. 
and there is a lot of exploring to do. The game is set in a single house, with each room representing a level. But that's not to say they're small, remember, you're the size of an ant, so in reality each room is gigantic. And the bugs have fully taken over, with each room cluttered full of both normal human stuff and structures built by the bugs. They all feel like different countries too, as different groups of bugs govern each room. Hornets own the bedroom and have set up an amusement park with a racetrack running through it. Quiet and cowardly dung beetles are in the bathroom, which is connected to another bathroom through a vent that's full of silverfish who are loud and like to party. We've seen this tiny people in a normal world thing before, but I can't think of another game that's done it better. Every regular household object in the game has had a lot of thought put into it to make it either look good, work as a platforming obstacle, or be used as a puzzle. Matchsticks make cages full of tiny kin that need to be blown up, drums and tambourines you can bounce on, combs serve as bridges, shoelaces let you climb up to higher areas, cabinets serve as apartment blocks for the bugs, with massive doors that need to be swung open like castle gates. All of it is interconnected with tight platforming controls and great level design that take full advantage of both the tiny kin and your moveset. You'll notice the one thing I haven't mentioned yet is combat, and that's because there is no combat. Tinykin is much more chill and laid back. You don't even have a health bar. The only time you die is when you fall in deep water or spend too much time in shallow water, and even then you respawn immediately right next to where you died. This game definitely goes for more of the laid back, slower paced, problem solving form of platforming, and honestly I prefer this style, to just sit back, explore, and have fun. On its surface, the story is equally chill. Even though Milo has shrunken down and is stranded on what is to him an alien planet full of talking bugs, he takes it all in stride and helps out anyone who needs it. He does kind of take a backseat to the story of Ardwin, though, and the religion that's formed around him. So much so that while Milo talks in the opening cutscene, he never talks again and remains a silent protagonist throughout, which is kind of weird, especially considering the surprising layers of depth to the lore and story much of it hidden in both the artifacts from Ardwin that you collect, that are hidden throughout each level, and the background objects of the house itself. Family photos, what objects and books that he owned, and the weird contraptions you find throughout. All the little hidden details about what happened in this world and to its characters before you arrived are suddenly interwoven in these background objects. The ending is also heartbreaking, probably even more so if you don't collect all the artifacts and learn the backstory of Ardwin in the house beforehand. These heavier story beats are contrasted by just goofy bug characters and their names, like Clorox who lives in the bathroom and Party Poopa, the mayor who sabotaged his neighbor's party. There are never total shifts as wild as Metal Gear Yakuza, but there's a good mix of levity with the heavier stuff. And let's take a moment to appreciate the game's presentation. I have a bad habit of not mentioning graphics, art, and music in my reviews. I tend to believe that with video, that kind of stuff is better to show, not tell. But I will make an exception here. Tinykin is simply gorgeous. Its cartoony art style is timeless. The bright and colorful characters really pop against the slightly more realistic environments, and the 2D characters in a 3D world look is always a treat. You know, we're so used to staring at our player characters' butts in-game that it's refreshing to actually see their face and get their reactions to certain events. Milo always has this grin on his face, except when he's plummeting to his death, in which case he's flailing his arms around and looking panicked. Come on, bro, I haven't failed you yet, have I? Calm down. Then he's got this look of determination whenever he throws the tiny kin around. It's little details like this that don't really make a huge difference, but it does make you connect with a protagonist, even when they're silent. There aren't a ton of cutscenes, really only one at the start and finish, but you do get these little vignettes showing off the tiny kin. These are beautifully animated little shorts that show both the tiny kin's unique abilities and how to use them, but they also show this game's humor and charm in full force. Each of the tiny kin species, varieties, they've all got their own unique personalities and ways of interacting with Milo. And I did kind of brush off the opening and closing cutscenes, but they too are simply gorgeous. I won't show you the final one, obviously, but the beginning really does a great job of setting a tone for the rest of the game, both in story and presentation. 
really, I loved everything about Tiny Ken. I don't have any issues other than the nittiest of picks. The levels are so big and open that I wish you had a map to keep track of where you've been. Sometimes you have to use the yellow tiny kin to build a bridge for the purple ones to haul something across large gaps, and if you've already completed everything else in that level, you're kind of just left to sit there and wait for them to slowly cross. Who or what exactly the tiny kin are and why they follow Milo is never really explained. And again, the whole Milo never talking after the opening cutscene thing is kind of weird. But those really are the only negative things I have to say about this game. Tiny Ken takes the 3D platformer mold and plays with it to create something familiar but unique. Splash Team's ability to experiment with mechanics from other wildly different games without sacrificing what makes the genre so great is commendable, and other developers should take note. Even beyond the Tiny Ken themselves, the game is stunning with beautiful visuals, perfect controls and game feel, and a surprisingly deep story. I don't mean to make this a competition, but Tiny Kin really is the most fun I've had with a 3D platformer in a long time. While I'm sad to see that Splash Team's next game won't be a sequel or another 3D platformer, I still eagerly anticipate it regardless.